So we're continuing this evening, uh, narrating the pastimes of the appearance day of the appearance of Lord Nishringadev, which of course we're going to celebrate more fully tomorrow when we have our get together with all the devotees. This uh, pastime of Lord Nishringadev and the how the Lord appears to give protection to his devotee Prahlad Maharaj was one of the favorite pastimes relished by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was residing in Jagannath Puri for the final 18 years of his manifest pastimes, he would regularly hear about Dhruva Maharaj and Prahlad Maharaj was a very important pastime for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Madhya Lila, we also read how Lord Chaitanya visited the temple of Lord Nishringadev at Simachalam. Simachalam, just north of uh, Vishakapadna. So very wonderful temple there. The ancient temple said the deity there has been worshipped since the time of Prahlad Maharaj. Actually, I was reading that uh, the deity there is uh, Varaha Nishringa. It's a combination of both Lord Varaha and Lord Nishringa Dev. Recently, I was visiting Kathmandu and I was observing that many of the temples in Kathmandu, they have on the outside, you know, like a, almost like gatekeepers of the temple. They have on, on one side, they have Lord Nishringadev, on the other side, Lord Varaha. <laughs> so these, these two deities, Varaha and Nishringa, are particularly known uh, to give some protection for the devotee. So, when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu visited Simachala, that deity had been worshipped there. It's a combination of Varaha and Narsimha. The story goes that uh, Prahlad Maharaj desired to worship a deity which, in which both the forms were shown because he, uh, he knew that both Lord Varaha and Lord Nishringadev are the Supreme Lord and he wanted, he knew that they had both appeared to kill his, uh, both his father and his uncle. So they were like uh, very important to him. And he wanted that both the forms should be there in the one form. So this uh, deity appeared self-manifesting in the form of Shila and Prahlad Maharaj was worshipping that deity. Later on, of course, somehow the worship was lost, it was stopped. Prahlad Maharaj appeared very long time ago. And later on it was uh, Pururava with his wife Urvasi, who again discovered the deity and re-established the worship. And so the deity of Lord Varaha Nishringa is covered with Chanda and you only get darshan on Akshaya Tritya only one day a year. The rest of the year the deity is covered with Chanda and paste. So there's always a big rush on Akshaya Tritya to have darshan of Lord Varaha Nishringa. Okay, so Lord Chaitanya, when he was visiting that temple, he chanted that Sri Nishringa, Jai Nishringa, Jai Jai Nishringa, Praladesha Jayapada, Mukha Padma Bringa. Right? That Lord Nishringa Dev is uh, the worshipable deity of Prahlad Maharaj. And uh, Lord Nishringa, he's uh, always. Uh, is uh, enjoying the 
embrace of the goddess of fortune Lakshmi. Right? Jaya Pada Mukha Padma Bringa, the lotus face of Lakshmi, rests on the chest of Lord Nishingadev. He's enjoying the honey like uh, face of Lord of, of the goddess of fortune. So Lord Nishingadev, of course, is a very ferocious form, very fierce. Just like in Mayapur, the deity which was established in Mayapur is Ugra Nishinga, very angry Nishinga. But to the devotees like Prahlad, Lord Nishingadev is not very angry. For the demons, Lord Nishingadev is very fearful. Uh, we have that painting of Lord Varaha fighting Haranyaksha. Maybe you have seen that portrait, the painting, how Lord Varaha is fighting against Haranyaksha. And sometimes people, when they look at that picture, if they're not very familiar with the pastime, they think that Haranyaksha is a good person and Lord Varaha is a demon. <laughs> they say, oh, who is this poor man being attacked by this ferocious animal, beast? They are not able to appreciate how the Lord can appear in these wonderful forms for the pleasure of his devotee. So, without being the devotee, then we cannot understand the appearance of the Lord. So, Lord Nishingadev is in his form as half lion, half man. Generally, we see a lion, and lions are very ferocious. But lions at the same time are also very kind to their own cubs. So, just in, in the same way, Lord Nishingadev is very ferocious to the atheists like Haranyakashipu but is very kind to his devotees, like Prahlad. So we're hearing about uh, how Prahlad had to tolerate so much uh, bad treatment from his father, Haranyakashipu. We were describing yesterday how uh, Maharaj Yudhisthir was surprised and he inquired about this from Narada Muni, that why is it that when Harani Kashipu has such a saintly son, a son with such good qualities, why is he treating him so badly? Why would he try to kill him? Even, you know. So, uh, Narada Muni then explained about how Prahlad was naturally the devotee of the Lord <coughs> and uh, Haranyakashipu considered the Lord or the Lord Vishnu and particularly uh, the different avatars of the Lord to be the enemy of their family because he knew that his own brother Haranyaksha had been killed by Lord Varaha so he considered that Vishnu was the enemy of their family and he wanted that his son Prahlad would have the same thinking and also think like that. But Prahlad, being a devotee, he could not accept that you have to distinguish between friends and enemies because Prahlad was a devotee so he had the vision of a learned person. We say Samo Pandita Darshana. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna explains how a pundit, a learned person, sees everyone equal. The elephant, the cow, the dog, the dog eater, and the learned and gentle brahmana. He sees them all the same because he sees within everyone there is the Lord. The the Lord is in the heart of all living entities. So Prahlad was, in, he was appealing to his father that you should, you should give up this mentality of 
making distinction and thinking in terms of friends and enemies. We don't have to think like that. We should see everyone equal, see everyone as a soul. Of course, this did not please his father. Harani Kashipu didn't like this at all. Anyway, it came to happen that Prahlad was put into the school and he was associating with all the young boys there. And in course of time, the young boys also became affected by Prahlad's association. Association is very contagious. Right? You want to you want to cultivate Krishna consciousness, we have to associate with the devotees. If you associate with people who are drunkards, you will probably become a drunkard. So we have to be very careful about where we associate. The example is given just like light uh, reflects if it's passed through a colored paper, it will take on the color of that paper. So, the same way Prahlad Maharaj, by his influence, was able to change the thinking of the young boys in the school. Although the young boys were all sons of the associates of Hiranyakashipu, in other words, they were all sons of the demons, these young demons became devotees. Their mentality was changed. So, Prabhupada also, by his association, going to the Western world, he was able to change so many uh, people from the demonic mentality into the mentality of devotees. Lord Nityananda told Lord Chaitanya that in this age we must be merciful. Lord Chaitanya was ready to kill Jagai and Madhai, who were the most sinful persons. They had committed so many sins. They were the most bad, badly behaved, the most sinful persons. And they had even attacked Lord Nityananda and injured him. And Lord Chaitanya was ready to kill them. But Lord Nityananda pleaded that in this age we have to be merciful. In this age we have to make the devotees, the, the demons, into devotees. In other ages the Lord would come. We know as Lord Rama he came with his bow and arrows and he shot his arrows into the hearts of the Rakshasas. And similarly, Lord Krishna had a Sudarshan Chakra and he could throw his Sudarshan Chakra and decapitate so many different demons who were giving trouble to the universal order. So Lord Krishna was doing like this, but in the Kali Yuga, there are so many demons, you can't do that. Therefore, Lord Chaitanya was told by Lord Nityananda, he was reminded that in this age, you must be merciful. We have that beautiful song, Parama Karuna Papu Dvijana Nitai Gora Chandra. Sabha avatara sarasiramani kevala ananda kanda. Right? These two lords, Chaitanya and Nityananda, are very, very merciful. In other ages, the Lord is, has mercy also, but a different type of mercy. Right? He kills the demons. Paritranaya sadhunam vinas chaya chaduskrita. The Lord gives pleasure to his devotees and also kills the demons. So, Lord Nisringadev is coming for both purposes. He is appearing to give pleasure to his devotee and at the same time also deal with the miscreants who had been giving so much trouble to Prahlad. 
we were telling how Prahlad Maharaj had influenced all the young children to become devotees. Sometimes people are not very appreciative of the fact that their children become devotees. In Bahrain, we have experienced how many young children come there for our summer camps, the holiday camps during the vacation from the school. The young children come and they come and associate with all the other devotees. And then sometimes the children go home and they will tell their mother, no cigarettes, <laughs> no drinking alcohol, no meat. <laughs> Sometimes the parents don't appreciate that, you know. So they tell the kid, no more camps. <laughs> they don't want their children going to camp any. They don't want their children learning these kind of things. So, so similarly, Prahlad Maharaj, he had influenced all the young boys. And the teachers, the two teachers who were sons of Sukracharya, now Sukracharya is the guru of the demons and his two sons, Sanda and Ambarka, they have the job to train the other young boys to grow up to be good demons. <laughs> but instead they've all become devotees, they've become influenced by the association of Prahlad Maharaj. So the two, te the two teachers are they're helpless what to do because they, they see that the children have developed a higher taste. They're experiencing greater pleasure than they were in their material activities. Without experiencing the pleasure of spiritual existence, we cannot give up the material pleasures. It's not possible. We have to experience the higher taste. Krishna talks about the paramdristva nivartati, the higher taste. So the children in the Gurukula had all experienced the higher pleasure. They had understood the pleasure of the soul. Spiritual activities were much more satisfying and relishable than any of the pleasures of the mundane world. So the teachers were helpless. They had no other choice but to go to Haranyakashipu and inform Haranyakashipu that it's all because of the influence of your son. Prahlad is influencing them. All the other boys have also become devotees of Vishnu. So when Haramikashipu heard about this, then he was just furious. He just lost control. His body trembled in rage. Because, you know, he's a typical demon. And demon means they associate with the modes of passion and ignorance. Right? The Rajagun and the Tamagun are very strong in those who are atheistic and demoniac. So Haranyakashipu became very, very angry and he called for his son and Prahlad came and Prahlad came in a very humble mood. Humility is a very important quality for devotees. All devotees have to cultivate humility. Lord Chaitanya teaches us to think of ourselves lower than the straw in the street. Actually, that is our spiritual dimension. The size of the soul is one ten thousandth of the tip of a hair. In other words, the size of the soul is infinitesimal, very minute, microscopic. We have to think of ourselves in terms of our spiritual dimension, not in terms of our physical dimension. In Chaitanya Charitamrita, 
it's also described Krishna Das Kaviraj uh, show his humility. He 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 writes there Jagai Madai Haiti Munise Patishta Pur uh Munise Papista Purushara Kitahai Munise Lagista. He says I am low I am more sinful than Jagai and Madhai. I am lower than a worm in stool. Anyone who utters my name loses all their pious activities. <laughs> this is the humility of Krishna Das Kaviraj. Such a great soul. He wrote the Chaitanya Charitamrita, but he describes himself like that with such humility. So similarly, Prahlad Maharaj, the saintly devotee, is a very humble soul. He's not proud. Doesn't think I, he's not thinking, I'm a devotee, <laughs> you should respect me, you know. He's not like that. He's a very humble soul. And he came before his father and he offered obeisances. He fell down before him. But Harani Kashipu was not convinced. <laughs> he was not going to be so easily changed. He knew what his son was doing. So he challenged his son, because remember we told yesterday how Haranyakashipu had been trying to kill Prahlad, and they tried to kill him in so many different ways, but they were never successful. That whatever happened, no harm would come to Prahlad, because Prahlad had taken full shelter of Lord Krishna, and Lord Krishna has promised. Kuntiya priti janihi nami bhakta pranashyati that my devotee will never perish. So although Haranyakashipu had tried to kill Prahlad in so many ways, no, he could not do any harm to Prahlad. So Haranyakashipu, seeing his son there, he asked him, where do you get this power from? Where are you getting this power that you are immortal, that we cannot kill you? And Prahlad said, well, I get my power from the same place you get it, Father. <laughs> right? Everything comes from the Supreme Lord. Everything comes from Lord Krishna. Aham sarvasya prabhavo mata sarvam pravartate Iti matva badante ma buddha bhava samanvita In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, I am the source of the material and spiritual worlds. Everything comes from me. Those who are wise will worship me with, with love. So, Prahlad Maharaj was instruct, telling his father again, everything comes from the Lord. This was not what Harani Kashipu wanted to hear. He was not encouraged at all to hear that everything comes from this Lord. Who is this Lord? Harani Kashipu said, I'm the Lord. Who is you, this Lord you're talking about? Who is this person you're talking about? Who is this Vishnu? Where is he? Where is he? Like atheists often challenge us. Where is this God? You worship this God. Where is he? Have you ever seen him? Can you show him to me? The atheists will say like that. They will often challenge. They would often come to Prabhupada and ask him. Prabhupada would say, Are you qualified to see him? Do you have the eyes to see him? And sometimes Prabhupada would say, Why you give so much importance to seeing? Why can't you hear him? He's speaking. He's speaking Bhagavad Gita. He spoke the Bhagavad Gita for all of us. And he's in his name. The, the holy name of the Lord is not different from the Lord. In so many ways the Lord is present. Prabhupada would say, who can say they have not seen God? Everyone has seen the light of the sun. 
here in Kuwait you get a lot of sun, right? <laughs> Everyone's seen the sun here, especially in Kuwait. Maybe if you're from England you don't see the sun much. But <laughs> if you're from Kuwait you get a good sun, you see the sun. And that sun, Krishna said, I am the light of the sun and the moon. And the taste in water, you have to drink water. Right? In the desert here, you need a lot of water, keep refreshed. That taste of water, that is also Krishna. In so many ways, the Lord is present before us. We can see Him, we can experience Him, but we have to be willing to see Him. Other times Prabhupada would say, there is only one qualification to see God. And he would quote that famous verse from the Brahma Samhita. Premanjana charita bhakti vilo chanena santa sadaiva ridayeshu vilo kayanti yam shama sundaram achintya guna swarupam govindam adipursam tamaham bhajam. Right? Prabhupada say only one qualification. Uh, I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, who is Krishna, Sham Sundar himself, with inconceivable, innumerable attributes, whom the pure devotee sees within the heart of hearts, with the eyes of devotion, tinged with the salve of love. So when our eyes are anointed with love, then we can actually see the Lord. Hmm? Just like little children, we will, sometimes mother will put some ointment around the eyes to protect the eyes. So in the same way, the devotee has to put prem, the ointment of love, prema bhakti on our eyes. Then we can actually see the Lord. So Haranya Kashipu, he didn't have that. You know, he didn't have any prem on his eyes. He couldn't see God anywhere. So he was challenging Prahlad, where is this God that you speak about? And then he asked Prahlad, is he in this pillar? And Prahlad, because Prahlad's a Uttama Bhakta, he's on the topmost level of devotion, so he sees the Lord everywhere. So he said, yes, Father, he's there also. He's there in the pillar also. He's everywhere. Right? The devotee sees the Lord within everything and outside of everything as well. So when Haranya Kashipu heard that he was in the pillar, then Haranya Kashipu began to break the pillar. And just to show he wanted to Try to. He thought he can convince his son that there. You see, he's not there. There's nothing there. But on the contrary, from out of the pillar, Lord Nishingadev appears. And of course, when Lord, when the Lord appeared from the pillar, then there was this, tr this tremendous sound. This just like sometimes when there's thunder from the heavens. You wonder, oh, what is that sound? Or the flash of lightning, you can the crack of thunder. So it was much greater than even the thunderbolt. Every, the whole, all, the, all the universe was disturbed just from the appearance of Lord Nishringadev out of the pillar. What had happened? What was that sound? It disturbed everyone. And it was Lord Nishringadev appearing from the pillar. Why was he appearing? Because he had seen his devotee put through, through so many tribulations. He had suffered so much. And why did Prahlad suffer? Because he was a devotee. That was his only fault, that he was a devotee. Just like Haridas Thakur also suffered. Now sometimes people ask, why do devotees suffer? Why the devotee has to suffer? Is a devotee shouldn't have to suffer. Well, it's not karma. You have to understand. 
the suffering of a devotee is not karma because a devotee is taken shelter of Lord Krishna they don't have karma so their suffering is not ordinary it's not like our suffering which is coming more through the modes of nature but the pure devotees are not suffering due to karma but there's a in some way, their, their suffering is to show us how they accept the suffering and continue with their devotional service. That they go on in spite of the difficulties. Just like the Pandavas were put through so many difficulties, they had to go into exile for so many years. Draupadi's chastity was threatened. So many difficulties were there. Haridas Thakur was beaten in the mar 22 marketplaces. Why, would, why, were, why are devotees put through these difficulties? It's, a, it's the arrangement of the Lord to show the steadfastness of the devotee. That without... the that, that they will tolerate all of these difficulties and continue with their devotional service without disruption. Lord Krishna wants to show the greatness of his devotees. So Prahlad Maharaj went through so many difficulties and ultimately Lord Nishringadev came to the to protect him from the, any further uh, difficulty, any further torture or any further trials and tribulations to be applied by his demonic father. So Lord Nishringadev appeared from the pillar in that wonderful form that he is not animal and he is not human, but he is half animal and half human. And that is also to show us the inconceivable nature of the Lord, that he is not limited. He can appear in any form he likes. There are 8,400,000 different species of life. But the Lord is beyond all that. He's not required to come in any of these species. He can manifest some other form other than these 8,400,000 species. Because he's the Lord. He's above all, everything. And the fact that he came from the pillar is also inconceivable. But to a devotee it's not inconceivable because the devotees know the Lord is everywhere. Just like Prahlad was telling his father, yeah, he's there. We, other materialists are surprised. How could, how could some person come out from a pillar? But the Lord is everywhere. He's within the atom, within everything. So he can appear at any, time, at any place, at any time in order to fulfill the desire of his devotee, Lord Nishringadev appeared in this wonderful way. So Harani Kashipu has con he's confronted with this form of Lord Nishringadev and Harani Kashipu understands that this is my enemy and Harani Kashipu immediately begins to fight. There's a great fight takes place. One of the reasons why uh, Jai and Vijay were sent to the material world was to fight the Lord because the Lord likes to have a good battle and he gets a good battle sometimes when his devotees are sent as demons. When they become demons, then they become very antagonistic and angry towards the Lord and they can give a good fight. So Harani Kashipu and Lord Nishringadev had a great battle. And at one point, Lord Nishringadev captured Harani Kashipu, and then Harani Kashipu 
uh, slipped out of his grasp. And when Hiranyakashipu slipped out of his grasp, Hiranyakashipu was feeling proud that ah, I've got free of him. Now I'm going to get, I'm going to do battle. I'll, I'll, now I'm going to defeat him. And the demigods also became worried. They were thinking that, oh, Harani Kashipu has got free from the clutches of Lord Nishringadev. Maybe Lord Nishringadev is not going to be able to defeat him. It, it's just like Garuda sometimes catches a, a snake and sometimes he lets the snake go just so he can catch it again. So the same way Lord Nishringadev let this Haranyakashipu go and grabbed him again and then picked him up and put him on his lap and bifurcated him using his claws he ripped him apart and took out his intestines and put it round his neck for a garland wonderful huh <laughs> <laughs> nice garland to give someone huh? take out their intestines so, of course, all of the benedictions which Lord Brahma had given Harani Kashipu were kept in time. Because Brahma had, had to give benedictions to Harani Kashipu, and one of them was, should not be killed in the day or in the night. So he was killed just at the end of the day and the beginning of the night. And he should not be killed on the land or in the water. So he was not, he was killed on the lap of the Lord. And then he should not be killed by any man or any animal. So he was not, he was killed by the Lord himself. He should not be killed by any weapon. He was killed simply by the nails of the Lord. Now the nails of the Lord are they're not considered living, they're not considered dead. <laughs> so, it kept in time all the different benedictions which Lord Brahma had given. So this is the arrangement of the Lord himself, that he respects the benedictions given by his devotees. Lord Brahma is also the devotee, and Lord Brahma had given these benedictions, so Lord Nishringadev kept all of these benedictions in time. Of course, later on he told Lord Nishringadev, don't you give any more benedictions again. <laughs> You've given me a lot of trouble. <laughs> so, after killing Lord Nishringadev, then Haranyakaship, uh, Lord, after killing Haranyakashipu, Lord Nishringadev is very angry. And Lord Nishringadev's anger, we said, Ugra Nishringa. And he was so angry, all the demigods were worried that, oh, how will we pacify him? How can we calm him down? He's already killed Haranyakashipu, he should calm down now. But Lord Nishringadev was so angry, he was so angry because he knew that his devotee Prahlad had been tortured so much, he'd been subjected to so many miseries, it had greatly angered Lord Nishringadev. So how to pacify him? So all of the different demigods from all the higher regions, all the higher plants, they'd all been watching the great battle between Haranyakashipu and Haranyaksha. And one after another, they all came and offered prayers. Lord Shiva spoke, Lord Brahma spoke, Indra spoke, the residents of Patpitri Loka spoke, the residents of uh, Siddha Loka spoke, the residents of the higher plant, of Vaikuntas even, the Vaikuntha residents, they also spoke. No one could pacify him. Even they brought the goddess of fortune, who is the consort of Lord Nishingadev. And she also spoke, but it didn't do any good. Lord Nishingadev was still so angry, he was roaring away and in his rage. You know, sometimes people get very angry, nothing can calm them down, you know. Do you know about that? Have you seen people like that? Sometimes? 
<laughs> ourselves. Uh, yeah, sometimes we get so worked up, so angry. So uh, finally, they got the idea that let's maybe Prahlad Maharaj can do something about bring Prahlad. So they brought Prahlad forward, and Prahlad came forward in a very humble mood, and he offered full obeisances to Lord Nishringadev. And Lord Nishringadev, seeing Prahlad before him, he recognized Prahlad as his devotee, and he placed his hand on the head of Prahlad Maharaj. In some places it's also said that Lord Nishingade picked up Prahlad and put Prahlad onto his lap. And it said that from that time Lord, the Lord developed the mood of pair, being a father of Vatsavya Ras, having that mood of Vatsavya Ras, because Prahlad is in that mood with the Lord. Prahlad always thinks of the Lord as his father. He's thinking of Lord Nishingadeva as his father. He's not afraid of him. So that mood of Vatsalya Ras is there. In previous avatars, you know, Kurma avatar, Matsya avatar, Vamana avatar, the, the, there was no Vatsalya Ras there. All right? Varaha avatar, there's no Vatsalya Ras, you know. But when he comes to Lord Nishingadeva, because of Prahlad, he becomes influenced to enjoy, that, oh, this is very nice, having the, the son, you know, when you have the son to be with you, father enjoys the company of his son. So, in the future incarnations, you see Lord Rama and Lord Krishna, and they enjoy that Vatsavya so, this is all beginning from the pastime with Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj comes forward before Lord Nishingadev and begins to offer prayers. Of course, from the touch of the lotus hand of Lord Nishingadev, Prahlad Maharaj was filled with spiritual knowledge. It was imparted into him by the touch of the Lord's lotus hand. Prahlad Maharaj is only a young child, so what can he speak? What can he say? Other demigods have tried and failed. So many great personalities, Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma had spoke, and they had failed. So Prahlad Maharaj said, how can I ever say anything to please the Lord, to calm the Lord? Well, I have no qualification. I'm just a child. What do I know? This is the humility of Prahlad coming before the Lord. One of the items of surrender is uh, humility. It's uh, you know, Accepting everything favorable for devotional service and rejecting what is not favorable. Accepting the Lord as one's maintainer and as one's protector. And having no desire other than the desire of the Lord. And always being meek and humble. It is one of the six items of a surrendered soul. So Prahlad Maharaj very humble soul. He goes on to describe that one may be born in a good family as a brahmana and have all the qualities of a brahmana. Samodamastapatsocham santirarjavam evacha jnana vijnana mastikyam brahma karma svabhavajam right? Bhagavad Gita mentions nine qualities. Some other places they talk about twelve qualities of the Brahmana. So one may be possessing all the qualities of the Brahmana, he may be born in a good Brahmana family, but may not be a devotee. So if you're not a devotee, then it is not pleasing to the Lord. 
even if you have the good birth and all the good qual all of these qualities but if you're not a devotee you're not very pleasing to the lord but if you're born in a family which even eats dog meat you may be like from chandala class but if you're the devotee then that is pleasing to the lord of course prahlad maharaj this very appropriate for him to speak like that because Prahlad Maharaj is born in a demon family. His father was a typical demon, the, great, the best of demons, right? Uh, he said he would address his father, Nasadu Manye, what is it? Nasadu Manye Suravarya Dehinam, Suravarya Asurya Varya the king of the demons, the king of the asuras, oh best of the demons, he would address his father. Oh king of the demons. So, you know, if you say like that to your father, what, what would you think you know, if your son came to you? Oh my dear father, best of the demons. <laughs> yeah. So Prahlad, you know, he, he's, a, he's addressing Lord Nishringadev here and he's and talking to Lord Nishringadev in front of all the assembly, all of these great demigods, and he's saying that the birth, just to be Brahman, by, but without being a devotee is no good. But even if you have a terrible birth, what may appear to be a very bad birth, but if you're a devotee, then that is very, very special. That is pleasing to the Lord. Because the Lord can only be approached by devotion, no other quality. Great austerities, Harani Kashipu did so many austerities, but he was not devotee. So just doing great austerities, that doesn't win the heart of the Lord, it doesn't win the Lord's attention. Having a great wealth, having good education, all of these things. Queen Kunti also spoke about this in her prayers to Lord Krishna. Janma Aishwarya Shruta Shribir Edamana Madahunan Naivahatiya Vidatam Vai Twam Akinchana Gocharam Right? That she is saying to Lord Krishna that you, you can be... No those who are on the path of material progress in terms of uh, good birth, education, uh, bodily beauty, yeah, and uh, good family, good, good back and janma and aishwarya, janma, good birth, aishwarya, opulence, wealth, uh, shruta, learning and shri, beauty, this, this is all material progress. They cannot know you. You, have, you are known only by those who are materially impoverished. They're freed from the desires for the material thing. They're not, they're not worried about the material things. Not that you have to give them up, but we shouldn't be bewildered by them. We shouldn't be attached to them. We have to just accept. Just like Prahlad Maharaj was explaining like that, to his friends when they were in the Gurukula. He was telling all the boys in the Gurukula, don't you don't have to spend all your time endeavoring to become rich or to become famous or to get the great education. All of these things will come in course of time if you're meant to have them. If you have that, if it's in your hand, you know, if it's going to be there, if you're going, these things will come naturally on their own without endeavor. But we should endeavor for what is really important. And what is really important is our spiritual progress, understanding the Lord and our relationship with Him, cultivating our bhakti, our devotion for the Lord. That is the important thing. Use our time for that. The other thing, the happiness and the distress, they will come naturally on their own. 
We don't try for distress, but it comes anyway. <laughs> we can't avoid it. So if the distress comes, the happiness will also come without endeavouring for it. So like this Prahlad Maharaj, he's, he offers wonderful prayers to Lord Nishingadev and pacifies Lord Nishingadev. So within our Krishna conscious society, uh, Srila Prabhupada taught us also you know, when we do kirtan after the artis, we sing this uh, from the uh, Dasa Avatar Stotra, Jai Dev Goswami's Dasa Avatar Stotra, and Prabhupada gave us a stanza about Lord Nishringadev that we should sing this, and he said this will protect our Krishna consciousness movement, and this will protect the devotees. If we are ever in any danger, then, and there is danger, right? Padam padam tad vipidam natesham. Danger in every step. Therefore, we can take shelter of Lord Nishringadev by chanting his name, by calling out his name, by praying like this. And Lord Nishringadev is Vishnu avatar. His expansion coming from Lord Krishna. We say, Keshava Drita Nara Hari Rupa. Keshava Drita. Who is Keshava? That is the Supreme Lord Krishna himself. Keshava. So, Nara Hari, Lord Nishingadev, he is the expansion coming from Lord Krishna. And we worship him to protect our Krishna consciousness movement and to protect all of our devotees. Now, protection doesn't mean we won't get difficulties. Difficulties will come naturally. But if we are always remembering Krishna or Lord Nishringadev, then we will cross over these difficulties without being greatly disturbed. We will cross over the ocean of material existence. And we can be sure of shelter at the lotus feet of the Lord. That is the important thing, that we want to deliver ourselves from the material existence. So we are praying to Lord Nishingadev like that, that keep us under your lotus feet. We sometimes see people when they become devotees and then something happens you know there was one case i had one, knew one man devotee and uh, he got initiation then a few months later somehow he had a serious health problem he had some cancer and so he was very disappointed he said i've taken initiation how i could get this so I explained to him that you're very lucky you took initiation. <laughs> the initiation means you're delivered from, you're beginning the path of delivering yourself from birth and death. Initiation doesn't mean you're not, doesn't mean you won't get disease, doesn't mean you won't grow old, doesn't mean you're not going to die. These things are there for everyone. But he said, how will I tell my friends? My friends all know I've taken initiation <laughs> and now I've got this disease. I said, yeah, you should tell them that now I'm going to chant Hare Krishna. I'm, I'm lucky, I'm a devotee. I can deal with this disease. If you are not a devotee, you wouldn't be able to, you'd be very worried, you'd be heartbroken, you'll be lamenting. But devotee, doesn't lament for the body because the devotee knows the body is temporary. The body is just simply a vehicle. You give up one vehicle, you get another vehicle. Just like you get a new car, you don't lament, do you? <laughs> oh, oh, my old car. Oh. No, very happy. Oh, I've got a new car. Oh, I'm so lucky. 
we'll go in for a drive in our new car. So you give up the old body, you get a new body, very nice, nothing to lament. So devotee has to see everything in the proper way. So Krishna conscious person, an initiated person, should, should have this knowledge. We should be prepared to deal with the difficulties which come on our path by seeing everything in a Krishna conscious manner. This is very important. And we learn this from the life of Prahlad Maharaj, how he de dealt with everything in a very Krishna conscious manner. Okay, so we will stop here tonight. Is there any questions? I have one question, uh, Prabhuji. Yes. If someone is an atheist and you're trying to tell him to become a devotee and he's not becoming a devotee, what can be done? Like, and that person is aging also. In that so case, someone is a someone is an atheist and you want him to become a devotee, and uh, an saying, atheist, you're saying? Yeah, he's an atheist. Oh, okay. Uh. <laughs> and you want him? You want to make an atheist into a devotee? Devotee. Uh huh. Well, <laughs> well, you can try to preach. You don't have to preach about God. You, you want to preach more about the soul. You want to preach about who are we. In Bhagavad Gita, before Krishna explains about himself, he first of all explains about the soul. The difference between the body and the soul. So generally that's the first thing people need to understand. Who am I? That's the, for the, that's the beginning of self-realization. Before we can understand God, first of all understand who am I? Right? Am I this body? Where does this body come from? What is this body? What's giving life to this body? Prabhupada would say, what is the difference between the living body and the dead body? There's no soul in the dead body. Everything else is there, all the chemicals are there. There's no soul. So we want people to understand the, the, the presence of the soul. Prahlad Maharaj also was speaking about that. He said, just like the expert geologists, they can find out where is the gold. Where is the gold in the ground? They will tell you where to go and dig up the gold. In the same way, the devotee can feel the presence of the soul within the body. So you want to make someone, you want to try to change someone from being atheistic. First of all, they want to understand who are, who are they? Who are, what is our identity? That within the body there's a spiritual particle the soul. So you want to help someone to try yeah. to get them out of that atheistic mentality? Right. You talk about that. Try to understand the soul. What is the difference between the living and the dead body? Where does life come from? Does life come from chemicals? Have we seen... This is, this is the mood of Haranyakashipu. Her atheists like Haranyakashipu, they say life all, all comes from chemicals. It's all coming from act, interaction of the element, the molecules. Really? Prove it. Let's see it. No. Where does life come from? But, you know, sometimes to benefit people, if they're really hot, you know, they don't want to believe in God, don't want to accept God, don't want to accept the soul. Just try to engage them in service because that is very powerful. If you can get them to do something for the Krishna consciousness movement, then that will be very helpful for them. You get them to do a little, you use whatever skills they have in the service of Krishna. His Holiness Jaipataka Swami Maharaj describes how he became, how when he first met devotees, they were building a Rathiatra car. 
and the devotee Jayananda Prabhu was there and Jayananda Prabhu asked him, he said, do you know how to use a hammer? <laughs> and his devotional service began with the hammer, hammering nails to make the Rathiatra car. So if you can get somebody to do some service like that, to do some service, wash a pot for Krishna, <laughs> go to the market and bring the vegetables from the market for Krishna, clean, sweep the floor for Krishna. You get them to do something like that, that's also very powerful, very purifying. Yeah. Again, why are people atheists? It's education. They never got the education. The rather they got the, the they got the the guruku from like Sukracharya's guruku. <laughs> the the athe the demons education. That life all comes from molecules, Darwin's theory of evolution. Life is, everything has evolved from the monkeys and mm -hmm. so on. This is all Harani Kashipu's uh, doing. So if we can educate people in the real principles of life, the real understanding of life, then it can change their thinking. So like I say, who am I? That's the beginning. We say, my body, my hand, my head, my leg, who am I? <laughs> we say, my, my body, but who am I? Who owns the body? There's a person within the body, that's I. That I, that is the spiritual person. Not this I, right? <laughs> So we have to develop this kind of thinking, this spiritual vision. Don't just see with our eyes. The dog sees with its nose, conditioned souls see with their eyes. We have to see with the spiritual eye, through the eye of scripture. So Bhagavad Gita, say, of course atheists, they won't accept Bhagavad Gita. But we try to begin, get somebody, if you can just get them to understand. There must be some living force within the body. The living, where does the energy come to beat the heart, to make the heart beat, to pump the blood? Where is it coming from? Huh? Where is that source of energy coming from in the heart? It's coming from the soul. So, just getting people to think about these things, and they can open up their mind. Problem is, you say the man is already elderly. Very difficult. <laughs> but otherwise he's a noble soul. Otherwise, you know, he's a noble soul, he has only done good for everybody, he has never done anything bad. But yes, he doesn't, he's an atheist, that's just all we know. <laughs> <laughs> you say noble soul, we don't, we wonder how noble, how noble an atheist can be. <laughs> yeah, so, if he's really noble, then, <laughs> he, he, he tried to explain this knowledge to him. Yeah, education is a very, very important thing. Even in old age, it's possible to change people. Just like Ajamila, the story of Ajamila and how he was dying. And at the time of death, the Yamadutas came before him. Now, Badri Narayan Maharaj, he tells a story about one man in America. He, w he was in the hospital and he actually saw the Yamadudas 
you know, he'd read the book and then he was in the hospital and he actually saw the Yamaduras and somehow he recovered and he came out of the hospital. He said, I saw them, I saw them, you know. <laughs> You know, if you actually see the Yamaduras, you know, they're not very pleasant people to see. <laughs> they're very horrifying creatures. And they come to drag the soul out of the body and take that soul to Yamaloka, to go before Yamaraj, to be punished for our sins. So, uh, you know, that's a, a very powerful experience, you get that kind of experience, that can convince people, maybe I better try to be a better person. Ajamila had been quite sinful, but after he saw the Yamaduras, he was not sinful anymore. He changed, him, he changed his whole life. And he went to the holy place and he chanted the holy name of the Lord and he delivered himself. So that book, Second Chance, that's a very powerful book, tells about what can happen at the time of death, how the Yamadudas can come. To, the Yamadudas only come to those people who are atheists. They don't come to the devotees. So if he wants to meet the Yamadudas, that's his choice. No, we have to conquer over death. Generally, atheists, they say, at the time of death, everything is finished. Like Prabhupada went to Russia, Moscow, and he met this professor in the university, in the Asian studies, a professor named Katoski, and the professor was saying, Oh, Swamiji, at the time of death, everything is finished. So Prabhupada was surprised. This man had studied Asian philosophy, but he was not accepting the principle of the soul and reincarnation. So atheistic people generally they're thinking time of death everything is finished. But that's not exactly true. So these are all difficult things for, uh, for you to present to your friend. Harani Kashipu, however, he had some understanding of the soul. He, he spoke about that in the beginning, when he, when he had to deal with the death of his brother. He spoke about that. So although Harani Kashipu was a great demon, he understood something about the soul. He just couldn't accept the authority of the Lord, that was all. But understanding the soul, that's the beginning for some people. If you can get that far, it's a start. Most of the world is atheist. We may profess some religion, but that religion is only for material purposes. We say, from religion we will come to economic de development. By being religious we get economic development and with economic development we can have more sense gratification. That's how people understand religion, material religion. That is what is called cheating religion, kaitava dharma, not actual real religion. Therefore, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Sarva Dharma Parigyashna Mami Kamsam. Give up all these dharmas. 
give up all these cheating religions and just surrender to me. Okay, so all the children have come? So we're ready now for prasanna? Yeah? Ready Prabhus? Yeah? Okay. Hare Krishna. Because uh, you mentioned in your discourse uh, where there should be the special eyes to see the law. So here this is from Brahm Samhita, Premadan Samhita Bhakti Bhakti. So like the yogis, they see the Paramatma in the heart. So can the devotee see the Lord in his personal form in the heart? Yes, the devotees see the Lord in the heart. The yogis see the Paramatma, but the devotees see the Lord Himself in the heart. They see the Lord everywhere. He's in the heart as well, yeah. For the devotee, the Lord is there. Because He's devotee. So the Lord appears there in the heart. The Lord is everywhere. Okay, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.